Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano and in this video I'm going to go over the Dozen a Day Green Book Group 5. And so we'll start with deep breathing. Two major concepts in deep breathing. Concept one is harmonic. So in our first two measures we are dealing with what's called a one chord. So it's Do, B, C, C, E, G. Measures three and four. We move up to what's called our four chord. Fa, la, do, or F, A, C. Then in the next line, line two, we're moving up to our five chord. So, T, Re. And then finally, we'll move up to our one chord again. So we've got one, four, five, and one. So, Concept number two is within each of those harmonies, we're going to be playing chord inversions. So what I mean by that is there are at least three ways you can play every chord. So I'm going to show you the three most basic ways right here. So we've got Do, Mi, So, fifth on the outside, every interval is a third. Then we can put the Do on the top over here. Notice the hand gets a little more spread out. We have a third on the bottom, fourth on the top fingering for the right hand is one, two, five, five, three, one for the left hand. And then we can put the E on the top. So we have so, do, mi. This time we have the fourth on the bottom and the third on the top. So still a little gap here. And the fingering for the right hand is one, three, five for the left hand, five, two, one. So we're going to explore those inversions for each of these harmonies. Because we're on the white keys, it will all feel exactly the same. But if you transpose this to a different key, you'll have to figure out where the sharps or flats are. So for this one, everything feels the same. You're just going to move the starting point. We'll have the pedal last until the next harmony. So here we go. Move up, first inversion. Move up, second inversion. Stay there. One thing I want to mention is on line two, it looks a little bit confusing because the left hand goes up into the treble clef. So just know each hand will always have three notes, whether or not it's in the treble or bass clef, doesn't matter. Here's the side view for number one, deep breathing. I just want you to see the gentle rolls and move during the pedal. So. Touching toes, couple fun things in this one. First of all, we're dealing with what I call triad scales. We're just walking up the scale in triads. This allows you to hear the harmony in a certain key. So in the key of C major, C chord is major, D is minor, E is minor, F is major, and so forth. So you get really familiar with the harmony in your key. The second thing is the left hand pinky is always going to be going down two octaves. And it can look a little confusing because in the first four measures, you have this eight with a dotted line, which means play that an octave lower. And then the next measures, you don't have that eight, but just know that when you move from measure two to measure three, those lower notes are just right next to each other. Here we go. Move during the pedal, and then when you press your hands down in the new position, the foot comes up quickly and back down, but not before you press down. So imagine like your hands are the release button for your foot to release up. Here we go. Down two octaves. Hand down, foot up. Hopping. Couple things for hopping. We've got these octave staccati, and I like to imagine I'm just, my hand's just doing a little rainbow as I go back and forth and play those. I'm not pressing like this. 
just a gentle rainbow back and forth touch. Item two, the hands are playing at the same time. Before we took turns, right hand did a turn, left hand did a turn. Now we're gonna go at the same time. And item three, the hands are not playing the same note. So the left hand has do, the right hand has me. Then the left hand moves up to re, fa, mi, so, so forth. So here we go, gentle rainbows. want to mention in an exercise like hopping, go ahead and memorize it so you can look at your hands and make sure you're doing the motion correctly. Exercise four, climbing a ladder. This is a full chromatic scale. So chromatic scale playing all 12 notes of the octave here. So do to do, there's all these notes in between. And so you'll notice on the way up, they all have sharps because we are taking this note and we're raising it a half step. And on the way down, we are flatting everything. So in the solfege scale on the way up, it's going to be Do, D, Re, Re, then Mi doesn't have anything extra, Mi is just Mi, then Fa, Fi, So, Si, La, Li, T, also by itself, Do. Then we come down, we change the syllable to an A sound. Sounds like A, but it looks like E when it's written out. So I mean by that, so we've got Do, T, then te, spelled T-E, la, le, so, se, fa, mi, me, re. So we've already used the A sound for re, so this is going to be ra, do. That's a little bit confusing, but I wanted to introduce it nonetheless because I do think the solfege is really, really important. So item two is the fingering. It is going to be one, three, one, three unless you have two white keys in a row, in which case it'll be one, two, three. One, three, one, three, one, two, three. And then finally, I would suggest considering where you're gonna play on the black keys, try to play right at the tip so you can stay nice and compact, maybe within a, a range of this or so. And your wrist is gonna be slightly higher for this. Definitely, I would suggest doing this hand separately. So I'm going to do that as I demonstrate. I'll do right hand legato, then I'll do left hand staccato, then one time of each hands together. So wrist a little bit higher so we can navigate those black keys in there. So here's legato. Coming back down, two, one, three, 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 two, one, three, one, three, one. Left hand staccato. Really stay on the tips here. And four, and. Fingering is very, very, very important for chromatics, so make sure to take the time to get it right. Here we go. confusing thing when learning chromatics is getting used to that three that you're just skipping your second finger except for if you're on those two white keys. Here is climbing a ladder side view. I'd like you to see the angle of the wrist. It's going to be a little bit higher so we can stay close to these black keys and then I want you to see the fingering. Exercise five, jumping rope, slow and red pepper, always one of my favorites. When I was doing this as a kid, I always just loved this one. So a couple concepts in this one. We've got the slow version, one and two and, and then the red pepper version, one e and the two e and. 
we've got the interval of a sixth in the right hand. I'm gonna hop up a third and then walk down. Left hand just stays on the interval of a fifth unless it's switching in measure two. So our harmony is one, one, five, seven, So with regards to hand position, we're going to have a nice uh, firm bridge. This will be played on the tips with a quick wrist for the quick touches of the chords. Here we go. Right hand up a third, both hands down, and, and, move up, two, now twice as fast. Rhythm important in that jumping rope. Exercise six, we have arpeggios up and down. Now an arpeggio is a broken chord, so we're gonna have do, mi, so, do, so, mi, do. And we are going to be going in this one between our one chord and our four chord. Four chords in an inversion though, so we have our four chord would be fa, la, do. In this, we're gonna start on do instead. So just getting used to the fingering of those inversions, rolling back and forth. So for the one chord, do, mi, so, one, two, three. For the four chord, do, fa, la, one, two, four. And the left hand's gonna start with five, four, two, and then switch to five, three, two. Nice flowing motion, here we go. Auto version, don't put the pedal on. Really think about your finger switches. This would be a good one to practice hands separately just because the guts, I guess you would call them, of each chord are not the same fingers. So that takes a little bit getting used to it. So we're getting used to the two, three, two, four, two, three, and so forth. Here's exercise six, side view. See if you can make nice circles as you pass through these arpeggios. Exercise seven, handsprings. I always liked this one too. I, I always just really liked this chapter. So handsprings, if you look at the rhythm, we've got triplet, quarter note, triplet, quarter note, triplet, quarter note. But if we put that triplet and quarter note together, you'll see that it's really just a four note chord. Do, mi, so, do. So we've got one chord for measures one and two, measures three and four, four chord, fa, la, do, fa, or F, A, C, F next measure, five chord, and then the last two measures, C. So our harmony, one, four, five, one. Now, so the next thing I would suggest is blocking those chord positions. So we have C, 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 move during the pedal, find your new spot, F, 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 F then G, G, And finally, then you are going to have a nice firm hand position rolling through that triplet. So when you play this, you need to feel the subdivision of three on the quarter notes. So what I mean by that is we have one and a, two and a. That quarter note is equal to one triplet eighth notes. So here we go. One and a, two and a, three and a, four.
Exercise eight, walking like a duck. So walking like a duck, a couple things to consider. We're walking up the scale as we have in previous exercises. So listen to the harmonies there. Try to play the thirds exactly together. So it's not, but it's just down, two notes down at the same time, up, down, up, and so forth. And then notice between measures two and three, we're gonna be ending on five, three, and one, three. So when we start coming down, we're gonna switch those fingers, same notes to one and three and five, three. So here we go. view for walking like a duck. I want you to see the down up motion. When you come up, go ahead and scoot over to the next down. See what I mean in a minute. Exercise nine, bear walk. Similar concept to these triad scales, but we're adding an extra note. So we'll have another third on top, which gives it a whole new harmony. So the tricky thing about these, I think, is the fingering. So we have two one down here, five three on the top. It's quite a stretch. So you're gonna be rolling your wrist back and forth. When you come up to the top, release the bottom because then two is gonna go right next door to three. And then it will stretch next door, then stretch, and so forth. But fingering, pay attention to the fingering. And once you can look at your hands, please do. So then you can make sure your position is nice. Here we go. Scoot, stretch, scoot, stretch, scoot. Now this one, you're just going to stay there and switch fingers. Now left hand starts with three, five, same. number 10 sliding down the banister always one of my favorites because of the glissando glissando is this gesture on the piano very fun to play and so two things to keep in mind with the glissando there's lots of different ways you can play it so the way I'm gonna show you right now is you want to try to touch the notes with the middle of your thumbnail don't get too close to your cuticle here the middle of the thumbnail I'm gonna demonstrate it here so you can see so you're going to Give it a little zinger at the beginning, and then stop. Don't worry if all the notes don't play. You'll get better as you practice it. So it's going to actually be three octaves. So it will be one octave high, and then land on C. So item two is arpeggios, root position arpeggios. Instead of playing one, three, five, for these, we're going to play one, two, three. So I find it easiest to block the chords so you get used to, oh, one, two, three, kind of spread out. And then when you play the arpeggio itself, instead of you having your hand kind of straight like this and trying to really reach the thumb under for the next position, shift it a little bit towards the right so you still have a good grip point and then your thumb's going to fold underneath. So two big concepts, glissando and arpeggio. You can try it both ways. Here we go. bit hard to get the timing of the glissando to be exactly the same as the three groups of triplets. So just do your best on that one. So here is sliding down the banister. You'll see I'm just skating on the top of the keys and then I land here and then my hand will be angled a little bit to the right. Instead of this, like that, we want to have it a little turn to the right.
Okay, exercise 11, we've been preparing for this in the previous exercises. So in this one, we'll practice the parallel motion scales for two octaves first. And the main thing to know is the crossovers are at three, four, and three for both hands. So something's always crossing at three. Then when you get to the octave, you've got a crossover with four. Here we go. Now we'll do staccato. Cross with four. On the long note, think about what you're doing. Change direction. Cross with four. Two, three, four. Now we're going to do the contrary motion portion of this. We're going to go opposite directions and in the key of C you will have the same fingering so you'll be crossing under three at the same time. Now if you're transposing this the crossovers won't always happen at the same finger but many scales they will. So we'll do this in the key of C. Legato first. Here we go. Cross under three. Turn around. One. Now staccato. Three. Four. Touch. 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 And now we are going to do the whole thing. So up two octaves. So we're going to start here. Then when we get here, we're going to go out, in, and down. So here we go. I'll go through it legato and then staccato. Here we go. Staccato, here we go. Left cross with four. Right hand keeps going. Left hand turns around. In. Down. One more octave. Two, three, four. So as you play these scales, always try to anticipate what's coming next. Don't wait till the last minute to cross under. As soon as you're done playing, get your thumb under there and ready for the next key. Exercise 12, fit as a fiddle and ready to go. The last one in the whole book. I've done a lot of different exercises in this book. Basically, this last one is just going between the C chord and the G chord with a lot of fast 16th note in uh, C position and G position. So here we go. Give a little pulse on the beginning of each group of four. Make sure the chords have nice roll-ups to them. Here we go. Move up. Move up. Move up. Use two and one for that. Now left hands turn. of the fingers with a great bridge. Here we go with the staccato. Roll to the next position. Now left hand stir. watching this tutorial for the green book dozen a day we covered chapter five or group five i hope that you found it helpful and i hope you will subscribe to my channel for more videos on piano technique piano literature and also quick piano tips thanks again for watching